Uh, I'm Tom Wolf uh, from the Practice Council of uh, SCRA and a longtime American practitioner. Um, and uh, we're going to talk today about the new bank for community ideas and solutions and international collaboration. And attendance is proof of that right now. Um, and that discussion that's emerging all started here in the conversations about how to up your, increase your practice uh, and, and the skills of your practice that have been sponsored by the uh, Practice Council. And they, we started to talk about community psychology and the pandemic. Um, and lots of ideas emerged and talked about uh, how, how we were struck by how so many of the concepts that we're seeing in communities, community building, mutual health, community development, all based on a community psychology practice. Um, and so it aligned with what had been the heart of what I've done for decades in community building. And here it was that communities were spontaneously doing it. And uh, it was a, something we really had to try to learn about. Uh, it was actually happening in my town with a small listserv. And then we learned that lots of people were having these same conversations. Uh, Bill Berkowitz and I chatted and uh, created, I thought that what we needed to do was create a bank of these ideas and save them before they get lost. And had, Bill had had a connection with Wolfgang Stark, who was working with the European Community Psychology Association. And they'd been meeting weekly since the start of the pandemic with people from Italy, Germany, Portugal, yeah, Greece, Britain. Uh -huh. Já, já começou, mas eu não consegui sair do outro antes e não consegui entrar em José, José, mute your... José, mute your... José, you got to mute. Um, so, we approached uh, ECPA with that and then we got a, a, a really wonderful welcome. But not only that, but they, it led to a full-fledged adoption. So, we're now creating this bank with joint cooperation between um, the European Community Psychology Association and SCRA, which is unique. In my 40 years in the field, I've never, I know we've talked about this and we've attempted it, but it's never happened. And it's happening spontaneously because we're doing something together. Um, and it's, so in today's webinar, we're gonna hear from Bill, first my introduction, then Bill Berkowitz from the Community Toolbox and UMass Lowell is gonna talk about the background and how we got here and how it relates to community psychology. Uh, Wolfgang is gonna talk about the weekly meetings he initiated and the progress that they're making and whatever else he wants to talk about, if I know Wolfgang. Uh, <clears throat> Cynthia Albanese is gonna, from Italy, is the president of ECPA, and she's gonna talk about the role of ECPA in the new bank. And Maria Fernandez Jesus from Portugal is gonna talk about how the new bank actually works, because she's done all the hard work to set it up on the web. And you'll see actual examples and submit stories and how to submit them. And our thanks go to Maria for the work that she's done. And then Brad is gonna talk very importantly about, he's from National Lewis um, in Chicago, and he is the ex-president of SCRA, and he's been an enthusiastic backer and partner in this venture. And he's gotten SCRA to adopt the new bank and find space on the website, which we, if you were here early enough, we heard about from Gene. <laughs> And then finally, uh, Christina Holt from the Toolbox, Community Toolbox has joined us and they've become a partner and we'll show you how that, uh, how the bank is working uh, now and how they're putting stories up and how they're gonna help recruit more stories. But this is not just a show and tell. At the end, what we're really looking for is for your examples, for you to talk about examples that you can put onto the web, onto the, the new bank, how you can send out the request for examples to listservs and organizations and countries that you represent, and then open up to what questions you have and whether you can join us moving forward. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Bill. Thank you, Tom. It's nice to see everybody here and greetings to everybody that I know and some of the people who I haven't yet met in person. I'll keep mine short because we wanna leave plenty of time for you folks to talk and comment and share your own ideas. But the basic concept of the bank of community ideas is very simple, meaning that just about every community in the world pretty much uh, has an idea, something that they do to build community life that's uh, creative, distinct, um, effective, uh, worth, and worth sharing the 
problem is that many of these ideas, especially in smaller communities, are landlocked in the sense that there's no place for them to go outside of their own community borders. Uh, there's no mechanism for publicizing them. There's no incentive to publicize them. And so they stay right where they are and nobody else knows about them. I mean, I hear about them maybe through things on the, the radio uh, or the media that I pick up. I, and just for example, just the other day, I heard of a, a program, this is based in Alaska, uh, which was basically an information line for uh, hiking trails. But the hiking trails in Alaska are closed because of the pandemic. So uh, rather than shelve the hotline, it, somebody had the idea of turning it into a line for jokes uh, you call in this recorded line and uh, you get a joke. Uh, it's a little different. Um, and the idea of inserting some humor into a very difficult uh, and sometimes really unfortunate situation. That's just one teeny idea. I could give lots of other examples, but there are probably thousands of them locked up in the world. So if we can create some kind of exchange or bank uh, to bring these ideas together and so that they could be shared, Anybody can make a deposit, anybody can make withdrawal, uh, and the idea is to give your assets away. And so uh, what's interesting is that, to my best knowledge, this idea has never been tried on a sustained basis, on a sustained basis in the history of the planet, to my best knowledge. Uh, so we have uh, the, the opportunity to create something that's, that's really unique, that is global, that can be sustained, and the concept, again, is simple, meaning that what all it takes is stories or deposits. Um, it takes people to publicize um, so that people can know about it and make withdrawals and deposits. It takes a little bit of coordination. Maybe it takes a little bit of dollars somewhere along the road. But like with anything else in life, uh, what it takes largely is the desire, desire to make this happen. And I think here today we can build that desire and, and move this bank further down the road to becoming a, a, real, a real living bank. Uh, and at this point, I'll stop and turn it back to Tom and hopefully we'll hear your ideas later in terms of your stories, your ideas for publicity and how you might want to get involved. Great, thank you, Bill, for the inspiration. I'll turn it over to Wolfgang and I'll say to the rest of the panel, Bill was an inspiration in terms of time management. Wolfgang. Yes, hello everybody. Uh, very nice to see you, uh, although very nice to see you, Gloria, for a long time, last time in, in, in Mexico. And although I'm very sad uh, about the news that uh, Jim Kelly passed away, so that's uh, uh, new for me. Um, yeah, uh, so uh, how, do, how did it start for me? So. Uh, I've, uh, like everybody, I was shocked when I, when I uh, learned about the pandemic and uh, I've seen, well, this is a, a historical uh, situation right now. It's a unique situation we never had on the planet before. And uh, then I realized uh, besides all the shock and besides all the, the, the hardships and the, and the problems causing, uh, I realized that in many, uh, towns, cities, uh, and, and small communities, uh, there have been very creative ways to uh, how to cope with the situation. So starting from uh, Italy, this is my first thing when uh, people started to sing from, from the balconies and uh, I'm, a, I'm uh, living in, uh, working in a choir, so uh, people started to, to have online choirs and these kind of things. And this was all kind of, uh, kind of touching my heart as a community psychologist. And I realized, well, this is community psychology, what's, uh, how it should be. So it's really emerging uh, community building. And these are so, uh, so important. So I started to call, uh, and, and ask, started to, to, to talk to people and we, we decided to have a regular meeting to, to, to exchange what community psychologists could do and how could they learn. And that's basically our weekly meeting. We started since uh, uh, 
beginning of March. So we have, uh, today we had our 10th meeting actually. And uh, uh, regularly each Friday on uh, 5 p.m. At, uh, in, in, in Europe. And Tom and Bill joined us and uh, we identified that we had the same idea. And Bill had the wonderful idea to call it a bank like uh, it's a different kind of bank we 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 used to, to to think about it's not about money it's about a much more important treasure of our planet and of our uh, of our societies and that's how we started to to collect things and we realized that in all over the globe people are starting collecting stories collecting pictures collecting uh, ideas, uh, how to cope with that. And we said, well, we sh really should keep this, this treasure uh, together. And that's uh, how we started to, to do this kind, of, uh, um, this kind of venture. It's a, in a way, it's a real joint venture in the best uh, sense of the, of the term. And uh, I guess uh, what we launched right now is not only the, the bank of community ideas, uh, solutions and ideas to learn from communities as being, uh, as experts, but also to launch a new type of collaboration, international collaboration. And that's, uh, I think is, is very well important uh, in, in this, these times. And we are starting right now in the, in our, uh, weekly meetings, we're starting, uh, started to debate about the question, um, what do we learn out of this situation? What do we learn as community psychologists if community is really a uh, uh, very important uh, uh, concept for the future? How can we uh, remember what we learned right now and how can we establish it for the next step of our societies and our planet. Great. Terrific. Thank you, Wolfgang. And you've been a, an inspiration for much of this. Let's turn it over to Cynthia and hear about the European Community Psychology Association's role in all of this and your role. Um, yes. Cynthia, are you trying to share your screen? Uh, pardon? There you are. Uh, Hi. Others are going to try to share no, their screen. We, we, we had a little trouble, but um, but it sounds it sounds like we have screen sharing capability. So yeah, um, but, but so I'm, good. I'm I'm not sharing my screen. I'm just having a few. Okay, I will be sharing, yeah. and the problem is with, with me because it's not it's still not working. Oh, it's okay. saying disabled. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Jean, do you know what to do about that? Uh, well. Um, it, as far as I know, it's not disabled. I'm not seeing anything that says that it's disabled. Okay, but but we can't show the site. We we need to show the site. Jean, if you hover over the share screen at the bottom, I believe it might give you an option to allow participants to share their screens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's it's. Uh, you should probably check Maria your option on the zoom because i i tried i'm just opening i mean something well it's, it's working think, right now and i think yeah. it works there yeah. we go so yeah. i think it's not really okay. it's not so it's really a problem it changed probably Perfectly. it's a matter of the setting that you have for for zoom yeah so well, Jean, you could also um you could also make uh, maria and christina co-hosts and then they'll definitely be able to do it. I believe anyone can share their screen right now. Yeah. Okay. It's They're working. getting a message. But okay. okay. So let's go right. back to Cynthia, <laughs> who's going to talk without sharing her screen, right? Cynthia, can you hear me? What's happening here? Oh, there's bad connection. So Cynthia is not not with us right now. Okay, should we go to uh, Maria, who can show us the site? No. Do yes. You to? There you are. Great. <laughs> I'm here, but okay. So Cynthia is not. 
Okay, so um, I'm I'm really happy to be here with you. I think Cici is back. No, okay. She can so, talk after you. She'll get her. Um, ah, I'm here. She's here. From here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I don't know what happened. I, I just okay. Basically, uh, uh, the our involvement as a, a CPA was uh, because well we we started attending the the group. Uh, that uh, Wolfgang set up uh, and uh, we really shared the, the worries about what uh, was going on and also we shared the, the need, the urgent need to uh, establish and make stronger our relationship in dealing with that. Uh, I mean, uh, SCPA has uh, quite a long uh, history because uh, uh, it was founded in 2005, but it was there even before. And I was elected uh, in last uh, October. And really my idea was to, to think about a CPA as a space for exchange collaboration. And I thought also that uh, in Europe, but probably also across uh, the globe, we were facing some challenges as community psychologists. And I, I really think about our community as an active minority, because uh, we have been struggling, we are struggling at least also in, in, uh, in Europe to maintain our discipline uh, within academia. And we are also trying to resist to the dictatorship of, uh, of impact factor. And we want to uh, be uh, socially engaged and engage with uh, societal challenges. So this was my idea when I, I started the presidency, my mandate as a president of a CPA. And then uh, in a few months, uh, when we were thinking about what we could plan and we could do, uh, the coronavirus pandemic was uh, there. And this in a way made uh, even more uh, urgent the need to um, establish our relationship and find ways, common ways to act to work to think together about what was going on and really we were worried we were we start what by what was going on but also as Wolfgang said in a way in a very spontaneous way it really came up that uh, all of us were seeing uh, resources and energies coming from the community and we really thought okay this could be a good option this could be something that could bring our community together that we know that probably we can learn from what's going on and maybe this could be also helpful for us in terms of orienting our future action because we really had this idea that uh, what's going on uh, uh, in the ground uh, that comes from lay people that is unplanned that sometimes it's full of energy and also of innovation and can open us to think in different way the way we can approach issues and we also think about uh, our future intervention so basically it was i would say natural to embrace this idea of uh, of the bank and uh, in in a in an evening i just had a call with uh, maria because we were at the moment working on the website of cpa and we were, and I said, what do you think? Could we host the bank? Because I think it's uh, an important initiative that could really help us to strengthen our network and also provide inputs for our future activities uh, as community psychologists. And basically, and basically she said, I think this is a good uh, idea. We can do that. I can get some help in managing the most uh, uh, technical uh, difficult stuff and that's the story I mean uh, we embraced the idea we thought that this was uh, uh, an opportunity and uh, we we really needed to collect uh, to keep memory of what was going on because this is something very precious for for our global community and our global community of community psychologists and so I think that at, now I have to give the the floor to Maria who is the one that uh, embraced the idea, okay, we can manage also from the technical point of view, and we did it. Great. Thank you, Cynthia. 
So yeah. now it's actually my turn. Sorry about all the <laughs> interruptions. Um, yes, and I, um, I have been working, we started to work on SPA website, um, but I have to say that I have some help <laughs> living in my house. So this is, <laughs> this gets easy. Uh, so I don't feel very comfortable when you say thank you. It's a very hard work. Yes, it's true, but I have some help. So it, when I have some doubt, uh, I could just, uh, I can just ask. Um, well, um, what we did, it's a very simple thing. We just uh, create a template in our website. And maybe I wanted to share the screen because it's, it's easier for you to see. Uh, so just a, man, a moment. Okay, something is still, I'm sorry. Uh. Maria, do you want me to share the bank? Uh, no, Maybe it's I can okay. Try. Yes, it was. Uh, it's okay. Now. It's there. Yes, it's there. <laughs> Someone so, else did it, but it works. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Okay. So this is uh, our website, and we create uh, just in the left side of the um, the page. You can see that there is a special place um, for the new bank for community ideas and solutions. And if you click here, uh, you, you have a small, um, a small explanation of the idea of the new bank, um, of ideas. Um, and then there is a, there is a link for the template. I will show you, um, where you can, um, add, uh, your add and share your experience. Uh, this could be also experience from your community. You don't have to be really involved in the in the community experience. There is just a small, uh, maybe four or five questions that you have to answer. Um, we are asking also for the name, uh, the country, and the email address because sometimes we have some doubts um, about the, the the story that it's being shared. Um, and it it is also very important to have a link for a website or for a picture related with the with the the experience. The problem with this template is a free, a free template. So you cannot uh, simply up, upload the image. So you have to send it. Um, you, you, you have to, to add a link or send to this email account. Um, I have been checking the email account every day. So if you have some uh, those problems with the template, just let me know. Um, but here in this uh, in this part of the website, you can also see the the stories that we already have uh, in our bank. So at, at the moment, we have maybe 10, 11 stories uh, from the United States, from Germany, from from England, uh, and I think that it's only for these three countries. Um, they are very different stories. You have some experience related with music and cultural, other more related with community, mutual aid and social support. Um, and here uh, you can see the, the latest ones. Um, and, but if you want to consult the full bank of stories, you just have to click, uh, click here in the, the bottom, the blue button, and you can see all the stories. So the idea um, here, and I will finish, is that it just to, I just want to stress that we will be publishing all the stories uh, in the SBA website. Um, so if you <laughs> already have a story that you like to share, just fill out the template. I'm not sure if I was clear, but if you have some doubts, I will be happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Uh, we, we then went to the U.S. for the partnership there. And Brad, can you tell us about where SCRA is with all this? Yes. Uh, well, SCRA is in full support of this effort. I've been the liaison to the European group. And as 
Wolfgang said, this is our 10th week. And um, as a, even though I'm a kind of secular humanist, that's kind of my church. I, I look, look forward to that service every, uh, every Friday. And we have great discussions and there's the, the, the bank idea. But I mean, we talked today about uh, the role of sense of community, how we kind of get people to shift away from the individual type thinking, thinking about the spirit of the community and Donata talked about how we need to think of, in terms of a universalism. We need to think about the community as the earth, the birds, the flowers, animals. And um, we had a great discussion about uncertainty. That's been a big theme. And, and there was critical discussion. Uh, are we community psychologists better or worse at, uh, at um, embracing un uncertainty? And uh, um, so philosophical discussions, and I think beyond this bank, there's going to be a lot of other new research-related ideas. And um, but but uh, let's move on because we want to sort of start talking about stories. So, but Scraz is proud to be partnering, and like Tom said, this is. I mean, I've I don't know why we haven't united before and come together and had these conversations. So, just grateful that it's happening. Do you want me to share my screen and show where it is on our website? Oh, please do, Jean. That would be wonderful. And, and thank you, Jean, for all, all you've done. I mean, you acted immediately and got us I cross set activate. up here. So on, this is SRA27.org. This is the first page. And it's right here. If the, we had to shorten the title because it wouldn't fit on here otherwise. But when you click on this, it goes straight to the bank. Oh. And on communitypsychology.com, it's right up here at the top. So you click on it and it'll take you right there. That is so nice. And <laughs> what we're going to do as soon as Ashley has some time <laughs> is she's going to do, um, some of you, if you're familiar with this page, we have entry point pieces that introduce people to larger pieces of work. Um, and then we link to the larger pieces of work. So Ashley is going to do an entry point piece about the bank so that when people click on this, they'll go to a page on the site that explains the project to them. And then they can go look at all the stories that, uh, and the Fantastic. project. Fantastic. Beautiful. Thanks, Jean. If there's anything written about this, um, like paragraphs, synopsis, or anything that you would like to contribute, feel free to email that to me. I'll be writing that up in the next week. Beautiful. Hi, Ashley. Hey guys. Hi, Ashley. Hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, one of the things to say is that uh, we do have a page with all three logos: the toolbox, SCRA, and ECPA. So when we go to a, when we make the link, it shouldn't just be the ECPA; it should be with all three logos. And so we have that somewhere. We'll get it to you, Gene. I don't know who has it, but we have it. I've seen it. Great. Terrific. Uh, um, that is the page with all three logos. Oh, did I miss it? Okay. Yeah, it's, it was down the bottom. See? On the bottom. Got it. Got yeah. it. Got it. Got it. Beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Brad, are, are you done or you have more? I'm done. Yep. I'm all hey. set. So let's hear from the last partner and the critical one, uh, Christina Holt with the Community Toolbox. Well, it's great to be with you all today. Uh, we're thankful for the longstanding partnership that we have with you all as colleagues in community psychology and uh, was excited when folks reached out to us about the possibility of partnering to support this lovely initiative. We have, similar to what Jean showed um, from the homepage of the community toolbox, we have um, this taking action in response to the coronavirus page. And if you click on learn more, it's also um, accessible under our uh, connect and community stories link. Um, it takes you to this coronavirus response toolbox, which has a number of tools for public health and community action. And they're organized around topic area. And then uh, we are highlighting examples of communities taking action in response to the pandemic. And so we are, um, as, as you all might know, the community toolbox um, has about 5 million visitors each year. And so we thought that uh, having the stories and linking to the stories um, that are being cultivated would be a lovely way to um, continue to help 
uh, spread the word. So you can see here, we've started adding some of the stories. And then if you um, click into them, it takes you right into the relevant page um, here on the ECPA mm -hmm. website. We've also included this link to submit an example, which if you click on that, it takes you to the form there uh, on the ECPA website. So it's a lovely partnership where um, we can really help um, hopefully extend the reach of these wonderful stories that you all are cultivating. Additionally, we will be sending out an e-newsletter uh, message to our about 4,300 um, newsletter subscribers to invite them to submit their own stories to this collection and um, definitely are open to any other ideas that you all have for um, helping promote population of these stories as well as spreading the word about the availability um, of this great resource. Beautiful. Thank you, Christina. Well, you can see what a remarkable partnership this is and as someone who's been a, spent his career working on collaboration and coalitions, this group has certainly co cohesed and produced a great product. So now we want to turn it over to you. And there are three or four things we really want to get to. Get to. One is, what examples have you heard about uh, that you could submit to the bank? So what are you thinking about? Because we'd like to come out of this call. We have had 32, 33 people on the call. We'd like to come out with at least 15, 16 new stories. Um, and you just have to commit to saying you're going to do it and we'll, you know, hope that it gets there. And then also, uh, we want to put the request out for stories to as many people as we can. So I know, I think I saw Lizette Brunson from Canada on the list. She might be able to spread this around Canada. I don't know if Ritu from India got onto the call, but she could spread it around India and you could all put it on the listservs you're a part of. So we recruit more stories because this isn't community psychology. This is community development, this community organizing. This is people who are in, in, looking at food security. There are lots of places where we could get these stories. And then finally, if you have general questions about where we're going and where we should go, uh, let's raise them and then talk about how we keep this going as an ongoing issue with, within SCRA. So let me turn it over to all of you with the questions, issues, and ideas, and especially submissions that you might have. Hey, Tom, I just want to let you know that we'll be putting it out in our e-newsletter also at some point, um, once we get it up, once we get the entry point piece up, and uh, we'll put it out, we'll publicize it via our social media channels too. Great. And this uh, session itself is being recorded and will be on uh, the Practice Council section of the uh, SCRA website. So ideas, thoughts, questions. This has been quite provocative. Lizette commits to de definitely spreading the word in Canada. Thank you, Lizette. It's like a, this will be like a telethon. Do I have anybody who's going to circulate it somewhere else? <laughs> I, this I think is this Claudia. would be. Um, I just want uh, to mention, and I, I'm sure we're all resonating to this, that people are becoming community organizers who have never been before. Um, I'm in the Washington, D.C. area of the U.S., and um, I'm, I spend all day on Zoom and on email just trying to get through the emails, and none of it's junk. All of it is really substantive and just uh, ideas are popping up all over the place and they're not people that you recognize as being community activists and they're all learning how to um, organize, collaborate, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, once this is over, hopefully soon, uh, sooner rather than later, um, I, I hope that we'll be able to keep this going uh, among all sorts of different groups. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Great point, Gloria. Other people seeing the same thing? Yeah, actually, um, I was going to ask, um, the next issue of the Community Psychologist, we want to do a special section on um, you know, people's experiences during this and, and what kind of things have happened. 
be great if somebody could write an article about this new bank for the community psychologist um, for that special section as an example of something that's happening. Um, What's your so deadline? It's um, unfortunately May 31st, but I can extend it a week or two if needed. But this would be a great, I mean, this should be featured in there. I think uh, a group should should do this, should, should adopt the, the, the idea. Thank you very much, Susan. That's a great opportunity. Terrific. The only thing I can think of, too, is I work with the National Network of Libraries of Medicine. And um, in my work, we're doing a lot, or the I'm the evaluator for the project, but the community engagement coordinators we have are working a lot with public libraries as to how they can transition to a model that can still serve communities, even though most of them are closed. And even as they reopen, there's a lot of need, like how do you provide virtual programming to people who don't have internet and things like that. So there's a lot of, a lot of work being done in that arena with public libraries as a sort of a resource. Saul Cooper, one of the great practice founders of community psychology in Michigan, uh, had a set of tapes that you could use to work with people in libraries about all the things that happen in libraries uh, that are you know, community psychology kind of events. So they are, they, that's, a, that's a wonderful location to reach the community. I have to think about how I can leverage that. Hi, this is uh, Ben Graham. Um, uh, this is so encouraging. I was just having a wonderful coffee conversation this morning with my colleague and roommate about um, so many posts about the issues, but, but no pathways for action. So this is such a refreshing webinar to be on, and it's great to see some familiar faces. Um, I'm based in Humboldt State University in uh, Northern California in the United States. And um, so I, I, I can think of a story of a group I worked with. I was doing service learning with 10 different community partners with 85 students when COVID hit. <laughs> so you can imagine the impact that had on what was supposed to be a very physical going to the site and working on it. But oh, it has been such a transformation and it has been sweet, sweet lemonade made from lemons uh, in the sense that it got students to really reimagine their relationships with community partners. And I was so struck by that. So I can definitely share some examples of that, um, how, how we partnered with them. I think those would come up with at least two really good stories and maybe a couple other ones. And then the other thing that I'm just, I, I think of like one example would be we worked with um, a group called uh, Centro del Pueblo which was uh, an immigrants, immigrant rights group here in Northern California that was responsible for, in our county, turning it into uh, the, the first sanctuary county in the United States. So they, they kind of commanded that vote. And so what my students did was help to translate a lot of the COVID-19 materials into Spanish and work with the dissemination. They also did a really cool uh, protest via car. So it was like a caravan protest. Um, so that's a good story. But one thing that crosses my mind the most when I think about that is how simple it was to build the bridge of, of my students who are passionate and cared about those issues, a community organization that was already doing it, and then using a service learning mechanism, and, and students just walk straight across that bridge. It was so natural. And it makes me think in these efforts that we're designing, which is so commendable and so cool. Um, everything we can do to connect with the individual person in that community who's feeling frustrated and wants to take action or feeling hopeless and wants to take action. Like what's their direct pathway? What bridge can they cross to become more involved in these initiatives? So it's just sort of a lens to keep in mind in all of these dissemination efforts. What, how can just your average person in the community suddenly be given a new opportunity to become more engaged? But, but all very wonderful stuff and I'll contribute best I can. Susan, if you want an article, I could probably crank it out by May 31st, so. <laughs> uh, Awesome, awesome, great to be part of this. Great. And then, you know, Wolfgang was raising in the last conversation in Europe, the Europe group, what are the learnings? And the service learning bridge thing strikes me as one of them. Yeah, I, I agree. So I just wanted to say that uh, service learning is a wonderful example uh, uh, of the collaboration between universities and, and communities. Uh, and during Corona time, uh, they have uh, all over Europe also, they have so wonderful and creative ideas how to maintain uh, service learning without, uh, during social distancing. And uh, as a matter of fact, and that may be interesting for you, Ben, as well, is uh, 
that the European uh, Association for Service Learning in Higher Education, they are collecting stories like yours as well. So I will, if you send me your, your uh, email address, uh, uh, I will uh, send you the link or I will put, put the link on the, on, the, on the chat anyhow, right now. Uh, oh, fantastic, that would be great. It. Thank you. Yeah. Ben, um, I think your story illustrates the point we were trying to make at the beginning of, of this conversation, which is that you have a, a wonderful story that probably none of us would ever have heard of had you not been in this call. So I think the, the question for me and maybe for us is that how can we tap into the thousands and millions of Ben Grams uh, located in different corners of the world to, to share their own stories? Uh, and what kind of mechanism can we use to structure that so we have a steady flow of stories coming into the, uh, the bank? Sounds great. Although the pro probably the world doesn't want an entire world full of me's. That would be messy. <laughs> no, thanks, Bill. That's a great point. Other comments? Other people with stories they can imagine submitting? I don't know if this would be a story or not, but I've been meeting weekly with a group of evaluators um, looking at how we can leverage what we're learning in terms of disparities and issues that are popping out from this and becoming apparent that I guess this crisis, in, in, at least in the U.S., has brought about a lot of, of disparities. So we're having these conversations about how can evaluators um, which psychologists, a lot of them are, use what we do to help maybe create a new normal. Because the, this has highlighted how our, our normal isn't working for so many people. So that's been a sort of ongoing brainstorming, inspiring conversations we're having weekly now. Other people? So I think that probably the stories could help us to find ways to redefine this new normal, as you said, because the usual normal is not going to work. And so it, it, it would be really important to find ways to, uh, I mean, use is not probably the appropriate term, but uh, to, just to use this energy, this solidarity and engage with that. Uh, and this is, I think, a responsibility that we can uh, assume as community psychologists, because uh, there is one risk uh, that uh, all this energy, all this uh, solidarity, all these networks will uh, go away, because in uh, a few months, probably not so many, there is, there is the people who struggle with uh, the impact of this crisis in terms of inequalities, uh, challenges related to economics, uh, people would probably lose work. So m many things could happen. So how do we can uh, support people using, recognizing these energies, these resources, and use them to rethink about their future? I think this is, this is a very, I mean, is a very strong responsibility, but also opportunity that we have in order to design a new future and the new normality, because I think that this is really a point. Susie, I think that's brilliant. And I think what we really, what I've been thinking about is, uh, is it time for a new Swampscott where American community psychology was born with a new set of ideas? And could we imagine putting forth uh, a, a paper, a gathering, a set of papers that address the kind of things that Susan was saying so that income inequality, racial inequality, uh, the, the digital divide, all become part of where community psychology goes because that's what communities are struggling with. And could we recast community psychology in a much broader social change, not just language, but action uh, set of modalities? Be very exciting and could be very timely. I like the idea of doing it on a global level. Um, partly because every time I connect and go to like an international conference or connect with people internationally, I learn so much more. There's so much going on uh, outside of the U.S. that could be so informative. 
for all of us um, <clears throat> that I think too um, kind of break down these international barriers a little more so that we're gathering more, sharing ideas more, and making this more a global discipline than, than it has been, especially in the U.S. And one that's not Americentric. And that way this phone call is very exciting. Mm -hmm. I'm aware that we have uh, limited time here, maybe another one, 15 minutes or so. So I'm just thinking about how best to structure the remaining time together. And, and maybe that has to do with ways people can think of to move this bank idea forward, uh, being in how, how best we can submit stories, how best we can disseminate the stories. Uh, and other things that are important to take up in this call today. So that's what I'm thinking now. I don't know how you, this resonates with you, Tom. Yeah, those are the questions. And there there been there's still 30 people on the call, so I'd love to hear from the ones who haven't spoken uh, about what your thoughts are about this. I would like to um, I would like to provide a contribution on this thinking just. For us at the, this end, we, we would like to, uh, in terms of advancing community psychology, it's in the meeting from um, some minutes ago, another meeting that we were, <laughs> uh, this idea of um, crisis intervention and recovery interventions. It might be interesting in terms, in the light of social change, uh, that we understand more and go in depth more about our capacity to respond in crisis. First, I always keep remembering one wonderful number of the community psychologists uh, about how was the response to Katrina. That many people thought they could have done much more and they were not able to understand the problem only a week after the problem, uh, the event. So here now we have this opportunity of understanding more about our preparedness for crisis intervention and uh, recovery intervention. So it would be also interesting to think more and learn at the transnational level these ideas of uh, how can we be prepared for um, when something bad happens in our at the global uh, situation like this one, how can we really understand our role and actually make a plan, a community-based plan, both at the local and the global level that we could actually advocate for. And maybe, can I speak? go ahead. Can I? Sure. Can I speak, Voltom? Yes, please do. Okay. Know. I was going to talk about the recovery because I think now we have to prepare for the third phase, okay? Uh, I learned from children in the Friday for the Future because they wrote a letter to the Italian government thanking return to the future, in which they insisted that this pandemic shows the relationship between health and, uh, you know, uh, environmental problems, and that we should set, try to put the two together while we do it. So Bill and I, since he's an economist and I'm a community psychology, I've written a little paper in Italian, which I'm going to send to the Italian one, I'm saying to the Portuguese too, because I think they understand anyway. And maybe we'll translate in English, but we, provide, we have a fortune in Europe that the European Parliament has provided quite a bit of money for green deal. And so we propose in this little paper that we wrote that we take the most hurt communities of COVID, which are all in very polluted area, Bergamo, Milano, uh, Veneto. And in this region, we start a kind of a partnership in, between territorial health services and the Greens movement and, and start doing some program, we give new jobs to the people, improving the air quality, because what, what Bill did in Italy, he did a small research by 10,000 cases, in which he proved, like in America at Harvard, the same thing, that the people who died most of COVID in Italy were the people who had pre-morbid diseases due to air 
pollution. So we can start building, a, to answer your question, Maria, and also Susan, I am very committed to trying to push all of you toward green and health together. Well-being and green earth, the flowers I was talking about. I mean, because I, the reason of flowers is because beauty is so important to well-being and mental health recovery. I've been having experience, this is a little thing I could write a story for, for your stuff, but I've been called by many students who are now therapists or psychologists, and they were asking for the first time how to do consulting online. And they remember at the university we had courses online. So they all called me about 30 people, you know, bugging me all the time. <laughs> how do I do this, how do that? But on the other hand, I said, well, it's interesting. Here are clinical psychologists all of a sudden, interesting mutual, mutual aid groups. So th this, this, this pandemic has enlarged also the clinical. These were not community students. This was my old clinical and community psychology course. You know, so they said, because, and so I think we should also favor this evolution among the clinical psychology, because the majority of people all over the world are in clinical psychology. And from them, we can take the new energies to become stronger as community psychologists. We can't just say, oof, clinical, like I was taught to do in America at the beginning. <laughs> you know, that's clinical, no. But in the best of intervention I did in my 40 years, including this one with a Friday, which think only about the green. The important thing is to take together the attention to people's feeling, which is typical of clinical, and the stress on systemic change that Tom and all the others today repeated. So I think that the union of two is what Maria was saying when she get, does crisis intervention, she also thinks at the policy level because some of the problems you can only solve there. Well, we have to, to get this framework, it's not simple. And I think we should work on this. So the stories itself are nice, but we should make, put in some stories in which the two levels are combined. And I will try to translate the one Bill and I have made on the third phase because it's already going this way, putting together, integrating what seem very separate. There's a wonderful new book out called Climate Action, The Real Story. And I can't remember the author, but uh, it, it's all of, it's a scientist, a climate scientist, who says that the core way of addressing uh, climate issues is love and love of the earth. Love of the earth. So. <laughs> yeah, let, me, let me add something uh, to that because uh, Bill was asking, well, how do we, what are the next steps? What are, uh, and I think uh, I agree with Donata that uh, collecting stories is just one step. <laughs> For me, it's an important step uh, because we learn from the community, but it's only the first step. The, the next steps would be, well, what are the, the, what is the special, uh, what are the special patterns we find within the stories? Once we have more than 10 or 11, uh, once we have 100 or 200, we need to analyze as well. And one, one of the patterns I, I realized uh, also in stories which, which uh, didn't, uh, haven't been written up to now, like from, from Portugal, uh, I, I learned one of, the, one of our more, uh, first, uh, first meetings uh, on uh, uh, community psychology in times of pandemics was about the homeless people. And uh, it was not just about, well, uh, how could you stay at home when you don't have a home, but it was, uh, the out of thinking out of the box, and this is what the stories are are about. So one thing is, well, if you are homeless and you have a lot of homeless people, and hotels and uh, uh, um, um, holiday homes are empty, why don't we use them? And that's what uh, you started, Maria and Jose, in 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 Portugal, and that was uh, that is. Uh, uh, an example for other countries as well. So homeless people are staying in, not just in shelters, but in uh, holiday homes or empty holiday homes or in ho sometimes in hotels. So we have some examples in, in, in Holland and in, in Germany as well. And that is a, a nice example, which I think teaches us how to think out of the box as community psychologists as well. Uh, and so we are looking really for uh, 
stories thinking out of the box. The other thing is to analyze the stories, what are the, the built-in patterns? And if you look at the stories, you, you, you could read in, in newspapers as well, not only ours, uh, you find that culture or music is a very important uh, source for community building, which uh, we should focus more maybe as community psychologists as well. So that's another small, ex two small examples where we could go uh, to identify and to analyze the built-in pat patterns uh, which are there, which can be found within the stories. And then you can really build up to, to next steps as well. So we're coming towards the end of our time. And I, I started the, the, the telethon looking for uh, 20 stories and I've gotten three or four from Ben. How about everybody else? Can you hop on the chat or hop, hop out right now and say, I have some stories I can submit or I have some places I'm going to submit this request so people can put their stories out. Um, what do you think? Um, this is Julie Pellman. Do you want like stories of people who are on the front line? No, we're looking for stories where there's been community um, uh, involvement and action. So it's not about what they're doing in, in the, the hospitals. I, I'm sure there's a lot happening around New York that you've read about in the paper. So if you found a story like that, uh, you could submit it to us too, where a neighborhood, there's all kinds of stuff I've read that's come out of Brooklyn, for example. Um, so that's the kind of stories we're looking for. Gloria okay. has stories. Good. And how about some, uh, disseminating the request so we get it out to other people for more stories? I mean, this has been a fascinating discussion, but it will go up in smoke unless we have some, some legs to it. Mm -hmm. Well, if there are people who are willing to work, continue to work on this, uh, it's Tom at TomWolf, W-O-L-F-F dot com. And uh, we'll, our ongoing group, which involves Bill and Wolfgang and Brad and Maria and Cinzia and some other, and the other Maria, some others, uh, will continue to work on, on how to make the, the bank work. Uh, we'd love your help. And there are obviously lots of other directions to go in. Uh, so thank you all. Uh, thanks to Jean for SCRA's sponsorship and recording of this. And uh, we look forward to maybe doing this again in, in another month with greater new ideas, or if the, there's a group of people who want to continue this within the SCRA world, then I'm happy to sponsor another conversation uh, in a week or two on a Friday. So let me know. Thank you all to our presenters. Wonderful to have an international group of presenters on an SCRA conversations. It's a, it's a, it's a great example. It's where the, where the world is going to go and it's where community psychology is going to go. We just, we just set the pace. Thank you all. Take care. Bless you. Stay well. Thanks, Tom. You're welcome. Thanks, bye -bye. Tom. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye, bye. Bye, 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 everyone. Bye-bye. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs>